So, ran right into a problem. My batteries were dead. And this 1999 Ford F-250 with the 7.3 diesel, Super Duty. So, what I had to do is I, the trial and error process, I've never done this before, I don't have any training in mechanics, so I had to figure it out myself. Sourced around, did some shopping, find the best batteries, cheapest batteries, rather. Found a good deal at Walmart. These uh, Everstarts were uh, about $60 less than the ones I found at the uh, auto parts store, so I decided to grab one. Like I said, this is just a banger vehicle, so it doesn't really matter so long as the thing works. But I had suspicions that the batteries were still good uh, because the vehicle had been running, so I didn't know if it was my alternator. Turns out it was. Bought the new battery, installed these, you know, the thing got running again. Took it out for a ride to see if it charged, and it didn't. The battery light stayed on, so I deduced that it was the alternator was bad. I tested the power coming out of it with the vehicle running. I was only getting uh, slightly above what I had uh, nominal voltage coming out of the batteries to begin with uh, without it running. So, bad alternator. Had to take it out. Did some shopping on that. I like to find the best prices on everything that I can possibly get. Go to an auto parts store, local area, cost me 200 bucks plus the core deposit for a new alternator or a rebuilt one. It was only like $10 less, so I said, you yeah, know, I don't think so. They just send the things out to China to have them rebuilt by little sweat shop kids. So I sourced locally and found a guy who rebuilds them. Gave me a sweet deal, Ken at Woodstock Rebuilding. Uh, this brand new, well not brand new, but brand new rebuilt alternator should perform uh, exquisitely. Guy does great work. So we have to begin the process of taking the thing out. It's fairly simple, easy task. The first thing I had to do is I take all the, the cables off the batteries, starting with negative, take negative off that side, take negative off the other side, dual battery system, take positive off this side, and then positive off the other side. I want to make sure that there's no voltage running through the system, so I'd short it out on the alternator when I go take this B stuff. And this is a pretty simple test to take the alternator off as well. What you have to do is release the tension on that belt, first of all. Now, how to do it on this engine, the 7.3 turbo diesel, is in here, there's a, a small hole on this, uh, this gray piece here which uh, fits a half inch wrench. So what I did was grabbed a breaker bar. Breaker bar. Love this thing. I've already broken three of them. Get it in there. Get it in the hole on that gray piece. Once I have it down there, crank it counterclockwise and you see it releases the tension on that belt. Reach in there, careful not to pinch your fingers and pull the belt off that pulley on the alternator. And once I have that belt removed, take our bolts off. There's three of them. One, two, three. Size 13 metric wrench. I don't know why Ford did that, but they did. So take all three of them off. So I got those three bolts out of the alternator. Next thing I have to do is take our power cord off the alternator. I think that's a uh, maybe a size 10 metric, metric nut. Take my uh, cord that goes into the voltage regulator, take that out, and then I'll have the alternator free, have it rebuilt or bring it in for a new one. So here's our alternator, fully rebuilt by Ken at Woodstock Rebuilding. Did a great job. I'm uh, happy with uh, how it turned out. He replaced everything inside, including the rotor, the voltage regulator, all the parts. Professionally done. Great. A lot cheaper than buying a new one from one of those auto parts stores, and you don't have to worry about it being made out of shitty parts, crappy parts from China or Mexico or wherever they come from nowadays. It's great. Now let's get it installed.
Okay, we're going to reinstall the alternator on the 99 Ford F250 Super Duty with the 7.3 diesel engine. You'll notice here that I have one new battery and one of the old batteries still. I'm going to try to replace this to, to Walmart. Let's see if my other one's still good. I don't know if it's going to be accepted, but we'll see. You'll notice that I have all of the battery terminals disconnected from the power supply. The alternator is going to go right here in this spot. I don't want anything connected because I don't want even the remotest possibility of a discharge going through and shorting out the system when I'm reinstalling the thing. I'm not sure that there's any type of residual charge in the system, but I don't see any capacitors to worry about. So, let's get going. So, first thing I have to do is remove those bolts that we took out earlier. And because they were seized in there pretty bad, what I'm going to do is take a little oil. I prefer to use Mobile One Full Synthetic. Uh, I find that it has the most advanced chemical properties which prevent corrosion but I'm just going to put a dab of oil on all the bolts and smooth it out just so they don't corrode and make it easier to uh, remove next time. Okay so let's get this thing back on. What I have to do here, firstly I'm going to attach my wires this our power wire that comes out of the alternator with a 10 millimeter nut on it. So I need a 10 millimeter socket, which I already have. Pretty easy job, this one. I rebuilt the whole front end last summer. That was a trick. Everything was so rusted that it took forever to do. It took me about a month to get it all taken apart and put it back together. I'm going to put this on tightly, but not too tightly. I don't want to strip anything inside. And then we have our regulator plug, which is still stock on this vehicle. So it's a little old, but it doesn't look like it's in too bad a shape. I'm going to reuse it for the time being. If I upgrade the wiring of the truck. That'll be one of the things I have to do. I want to mount a bunch of lights on it, so I might have to get a beefier alternator. Okay, so that's in place. And then you see, it just sits right back on. Perfect fit. Ken there at Woodstock Rebuilders did a great job for me. Grab my bolts that I oiled up earlier. One in each hole. Get them started. And then what I'll do is get my ratchet for the things. I thought it was a half inch, but half inch is a little too tight. Surprisingly enough, when Ford built this, they used metric. Not sure what size it is, but I'll have to get it. Bolt that down. I'll show you how to get this belt back on. So it's a size 13. Size 13 socket for this thing. They're nice and oiled so they won't rust. Next time, if there is a next time, I have to take this off. Off nice and easily. That one's a little trickier to get to. Tighten them down just hand tight for now. Once I get them hand tight, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my manual and find out the torque specs and torque them down 
specification. Now let's do that. Well, come to find out, the hands manual does not have torque specifications for this, so I'm just going to give it a good tightening, make sure it's secure on there, so that all the motion of the engine, the belts, doesn't yank the thing off or dislodge it in any way. It would affect the function or destroy my belts. So let's hand tighten down. Not too tight, but tight enough. All my connections are secure. Alternator's in place. Now let's get that belt back on. We're almost done. So, pretty simple. All you gotta do is crank your breaker bar counterclockwise to release the tension on the belt. Slide it over the pulley. Make sure they're all in place. Slowly put the tension back on. Make sure everything holds, which it does. Okay, belt's back on. Now, I'll take the breaker bar off. And there we have it. Rebuilt alternator in place on the 1999 Ford F-250 7.3 Super Duty Diesel. Now, we're going to reconnect our battery post. So we get some current flowing through this beast. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to test the batteries with a voltimeter. Just to make sure they have adequate charge to run the thing. Okay, what we have here is our cheapo voltimeter from Walmart, 25 bucks. It's all right for what I'm using it for. There's probably more complicated ways to do this, but I found this works just fine uh, for my purposes on this old vehicle. I'll just set it to DC voltage. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take the black lead and touch it to the negative negative side of our battery here and then I'm going to take the red lead and touch it to the positive side of our battery here and just get a rudimentary voltage reading of what's coming out of the battery. So I got a reading of 12.02 volts which is low however it is higher than the original reading I had which was I think 11.86 uh, before I installed the new battery. So my suspicions are correct the battery all it needed was some new fluid and to be cleaned up, and the battery is still good, so maybe I can return that other one to Walmart. We'll see. Now I'll check the other battery. Yeah, the other battery from Walmart. It's 12.2 volts coming out of it, which isn't ideal. I should have more about 12.5 and above. However, that's going to work to start the vehicle once I get that alternator charging. We'll see what the positive charge is. Uh, ultimately. Next step is to reattach our battery cables. Start with this side. I always do positive first, do negative afterwards. Attach that, tighten it down a second. And come over here, see where I even dropped the other positive cable. Put that on this one. And I'll tighten that down in a second. Over to the other side, attach my black cable, negative, tighten that down, and I come over here, attach our black cable, I'll tighten that down, everything should be good to go, hopefully it starts with the power and the battery, I'll tighten that down and I'll be back to you when I have it going. So I got all those cables bolted down, the alternator, rebuilt alternator, is back in place. Let's see if this beast will start up. It's pretty cold out here in New England, so it may or may not. We'll see. I love this puppy. Nice big old diesel truck. Uh, Wait till our glow plugs charge up. Everything's turned off. Those batteries are a little low, so I don't know if it's going to turn it over. We have to charge them. Hopefully not. All right, glow plugs are warmed up. Yeah. Is she going to go? Come on, baby. Oh, yeah. Rumble of diesel. And she's running. Excellent. We'll run for the Alternator is 
seems to be holding. Good thing. Let's see. Oh, look at that. Battery light is not on. And I think we solved our problem by replacing that alternator. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to test the power coming out of the alternator to make sure that it's at the correct voltage to actually recharge my batteries. If it is, I think it's a job well done. So I tested out that alternator, I'm getting over 14 volts coming from it while the truck's running, which is what I want just by testing those uh, the cables coming out of it. Like I said, there's probably more advanced ways of doing it, but with no mechanical training, I'd say uh, it's pretty good. So instead of taking it to a shop and getting charged $500 for diagnostics and replacement of the alternator, did it all myself, a couple hours of time, some web searching for the best prices, and it cost me less than $100 to uh, put a new alternator on that big beefy truck. Works for me.